Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com coming at you with 2023 Tops Series 2 Baseball. Six box jumbo, pick your team number eight from Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com. All card ship. Thanks everyone for taking advantage of that 20% off here. The people who took advantage of it. So thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. Take advantage of the 20% off. Congrats to the people who won their spots in the team random that we did. That's in a separate video if you want to look for those results. And John, you ended up with last spot mojo with the San Diego Padres. San Diego. And here's the series two. All six boxes. It's a full caser. There's two, there's four, and there's six. Good luck. We got some baseball on in the background. If LSU at Florida in in wherever they are. Nebraska? Omaha, They're Omaha, right? Yeah. And LSU's up 10-2. Looks like they're gonna in the uh, bottom of the fifth so there's still some time left and things you know things can always get wacky in a collegiate game but LSU is in control right now here is eight out of 50 Rhino that's gonna go to the Cubs Daniel who won that spot in the team random so we'll save those right here and then we've got the silver packs right there which we'll do after the main box. I'm sure Florida fans wish that they would have saved some runs from yesterday for today. It's a, it's a light day in Major League Baseball. Not much happening today. Just a handful of games happening. That Reds-Orioles uh, game in Baltimore still in a rain delay. They're stuck in the bottom of the third with the Orioles up 2-1. Top of the seventh, Brewers are up 2-1 on the Mets. And they've got runners on second and third as well. Bottom of the seventh, Braves are up on the Twins 2-1. And bottom of the third, Tigers are up on the Rangers 4-1. And uh, White Sox Angels later tonight, Nationals Mariners a little bit after that. David, what's going on? You watched the previous video. Are you happy with the results? That was a nice win. Got to join those fillers, ladies and gentlemen. You never know what you can win. All right, so obviously all cards will ship. All right, here's uh, Charles LeBlanc to 72 for Miami. That'll be for Eric. Francisco Alvarez, rookie card. That's for the Mets. So I think from our list here, Jordan Walker, Masataka Yoshida, Anthony Volpe, Francisco Alvarez, James Outman, Corbin Carroll are some of your, uh, some of the top tier rookies that we're gonna be sleeving and taking care of sort of immediately. Um, Obviously, all card ship. I'm sure I'll miss some players, and if I do, don't worry. They're all, they're all going to get to you. So 
So Jordan Walkers will go to Matthew Wood and the Cardinals. Francisco Alvarez for Daniel and the Mets. And who has the Red Sox? That'll be all. Oh, that's also Daniel Smith. There you go, Daniel. We got Drew Waters, gold, gold border, not numbered, but still nice. And there's David McKinnon, rookie auto for the A's, Eric M with the Athletics. And we'll do an autograph recap uh, at the end of the break, which will be a little while. So if you're watching, settle in. If you don't feel like watching, uh, I think Chris Jaspi is live on uh, Instagram right now. At Jaspi's Breaks on Instagram Live. And uh, you can rip some personal boxes with him. I think he might have some series two for personal boxes as well. Nice, Gilo, you're gonna go to the uh, Royals-Dodgers games this, this weekend. Sounds like fun. Do we have uh, do we have probable starters already? Might be a tad bit early, but there's a Yankees gold team card. Ronald, obviously the World Baseball Classic cards will go to the team that they're on. Got Babe Ruth, Legends of the Game, silver for the Yankees. That'll be for Daniel. We got Matt Walner. We got Adam Frazier to four ninety nine for the O's. That'll be for Aaron Billingsley. Field, Rockies. If I do miss a card, it's probably because it was upside down like that. Just in the interest of time, I'm trying to breeze through this as a little bit more quickly, but. Paul's saying it's good that the Tigers are in Texas because it has rained all day in Michigan. It seems to be raining a lot of other places too. Baltimore is still stuck in a rain delay. Gabriel Arias, gold. Dean Kramer, speaking of the Tigers, to 2023. Nicole has Detroit. And uh, Daniel has my Dodgers. James Allen, who started out as the favorite for the NL Rookie of the Year, but I think Corbin Carroll has since taken over, but I think James Alton has been kind of slowly heating up the last couple of games. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's a sign of things to come. There's Trey Turner, and there's a Bobby Wood Jr. relic. G. Lowe's Royals. Who has his Royals? Michael got randomized the Royals in that filler. Roman left the Cubs game in uh, in London with a blister. Those, those can be a nagging injury. Adjust your fantasy lineups. Freddie Peralta, and we've got a Justin Verlander. Detroit edition, AL League leader, triple crown winner. Yeah, he's pretty good. That's going to go to Nicole and the Tigers.
caught a Volpe here. That's going to go to Daniel. All these rookie cards add up. Could grade out nicely. There's a Corbin Carroll. I'm trying to catch as many of those as possible. Ricky got the uh, Diamondback straight up. We'll take a look at those Rookie of the Year odds and while I'm ripping the next box, ripping the packs in the next boxes. I wonder if odds have changed. I think the last time we fully checked a week or two ago, it was it was uh, the Japanese player, oh, am I blanking on his name, in Boston, Yoshida, was the favorite in the AL, and um, Corbin Carroll was the favorite in the NL. You guys needed it. Your grass was turning brown. Some of these, sometimes we can see uh, numbers on here, numbered cards, sometimes autographs. It's possible. Chilo is asking, have I ever mowed a lawn before? Absolutely. Yeah, I've mowed a lawn. I've hand mowed a lawn in my uh, childhood home in Upland, California. My parents recently moved out of there last summer. They retired, they moved to Vegas, which I'm glad they, I mean, I would rather have them stay in California, but if they were to move anywhere, Vegas would be the choice. the polar bear for the Mets that'll be for Daniel but yes I've hand mowed along for many years small front yard but we had like uh, the front yard didn't have too much grass that was easy but uh, but our backyard was relatively I guess for California it was just I think a regular suburban California the regular size I guess Um, but there was a, but we, but there was like a hill. There was like a, it was almost like two levels. It was like one level, and then there was a small hill, and then it leveled out. Like we said, no. Uh, have Have you ever? Have you ever seen a uh, a hand lawnmower? I don't even do they even sell those anymore. It was just like it's like a it's like one cylinder with blades on it, and then you just you just move it through and it cuts the grass. And then afterwards, you have to pick up the cuttings. And it doesn't go anywhere. It just sits on top, and then you have to go you have to go back. And pick up all the cuttings and put it in a in a bag. Builds character, Gilo. But then my dad finally got a a gas powered um, lawnmower. Still a push lawnmower, which is great. We'll look at those rookie of the year odds in the next box. Mitch Keller. And there's Xavion Curry to 199 for Cleveland. Yeah, those old 50s looking modern. It was old then. And my, uh, my dad said it claimed it built character. It's good exercise. Stuff that, things that dads say. All right, we got a Christopher Morell. Wow, three out of ten rookie jersey and autograph. I don't think I've seen this reverence autograph patch card. This is the first one I've seen of this in series two. That's awesome. That's for Daniel and the Cubs, who won an extra spot in the team random, then got randomized. The Cubs ends up with the Christopher Morell RPA.
That's awesome. Mow lawn out in the lush Midwest summer? I don't think so. It's, it's bad enough in California summers. Especially, uh, I lived about an hour, or I grew up about an hour or so inland from, from LA proper, from Hermosa Beach. And um, it could get pretty toasty out there. There's Ryan Nelson to 2023. Uh, gate open or gate close? Close, please. Okay. Thanks, Chewy. I'll see you, man. And there's Drew Rasmussen to four ninety nine. All right, Joe. All right, man. Later Thanks. Later. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, sir. Closing time for the shop. But yeah. Yeah, I'll bet in the Midwest it would build character. I've uh, in the summer. Late July, August maybe, I did go to the Field of Dreams in Iowa. Dyersville, I believe. And just standing in that baseball field in that farmland was hot enough. There's Kike Hernandez to 300. I, I don't know what kind of heat it was. It was definitely a, uh, it's what, I, I think it's what some Midwesterners call still. Ever, you guys ever heard that? I don't know if that's in use anymore, but... But yeah, it was, uh, it was hot. Middle of farmland, no trees, no shade. Cornfield, as far as the eye can see. Not too much of a breeze. Just still. And I was like, man, you know, and we, our family went camping a lot. We were, we were we went outdoors a lot. So it's not like I'm totally a city kid, but I was like, I'm not mowing lawns in this. I think I must've caught a dry day in Iowa. It, it wasn't too humid, so which was nice. I, I, can, I can handle heat. No. But it's where it's humidity is what is what gets me. The next year's Field of Dreams will be held in Birmingham. Or are they still calling it a Field of Dreams game, even though it's in a different place? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's what I hear. I think they're building a whole stadium and like a. I forget what else they're doing. I feel like they're not, are they building office buildings there or something like that? Or like, it's gonna be like a, a center. Now here's a Masa Taka Yoshida to 2023. Daniel with Boston. This is the kind of stuff we wanna see for these rookies, numbered cards. 1098 out of 2023. Field of Dreams is cool, though. Anyone has a chance to go. I It was after the National in Chicago, so, and I actually went solo. Cause I, only, I just took like a, a day or two off just to pop over there and pop back. But uh, I suppose it'd be pretty fun if you went with a group of people. I think you can like play catch out there, at least back then you could. There's Vinny Pascatino for the Royals. That'll be for Michael. You can play like some, some pickup games out there. You can throw the ball around a little bit. Just to 50. But there's not much else to do. So you can, I, I guess, I, I think they're building like a bigger gift shop. The, before the gift shop was just like a little kiosk kind of looking thing, but I think they're gonna build a bigger one. So I suppose I'll be that. Maybe they'll build like a little cafe out there or something. I think they're kind of doing, planning on all those upgrades, but, but you can kind of go there and you'll be like, oh, cool, here it is. It is cool. There's not much to do. You can run around a little bit, I guess. 
I think they do, they used to do events there where they would have like, um, and I wasn't there on a weekend where they were doing that, but they would do like, like ghost baseball weekend. So they'll, they'll have like players dress in the, the uniforms of the era and then play like a few innings or something like that. 52 out of 75. I think there are other events where, uh, here's your order on Alvarez, by the way, for Aaron and the Astros. I think maybe they would do like, you know, movie screenings out there and do like other little events and stuff out there, but I just wasn't there on a weekend with events. But I suppose if you wrapped an event around it, good to go to. Stayed, in a, stayed overnight in Dubuque, which was also a nice little town right on the Mississippi. First time seeing the Mississippi which was pretty awesome, the mighty Mississippi. People, uh, at least in Dubuque anyway, um, like the locals there at like the restaurants and bars and stuff, real friendly. I mean, I thought that was a stereotype. You know, like, like all Canadians are nice, like that kind of thing. It's like, sure. But they were. <laughs> At least the ones I encountered. I'm sure there's a-holes too, just like any other city, I guess. Yeah, most people I encountered were, were pretty friendly. Maybe they turned on the charm because it's probably wearing a Dodger hat. It was probably like clearly not a towner. Daniel mowed over an underground hornet's nest once when he was 12 or 13. It was unpleasant. Uh, I'm assuming, did you get stung? Were there, were, there, were, were, were there stings happening? Here's a DJ spinning the postseason records galore. Stung many times. Eesh. I have, uh, have, I, have I been stung? Not by a hornet. I've been stung by a bee. <laughs> That's my, there you go, hippie. That's a sounds like a field of screams, says hippie. I've been stung by a bee. I think I was at a at a friend's pool. We were playing some sort of pool swimming pool game. Maybe uh, maybe Marco Polo. Maybe Redfish, Bluefish. Maybe, no, that's not the game. Maybe uh, Red Light, Green Light. And I had put my hand back to push off quietly. Um, on the ledge of the pool, and there is apparently a bee there my hand on the bee, the bee stung me. He did, the bee did not survive, as most bees do not survive after releasing their sting and poison, coursing through my veins. It was on like a finger or something like that. I think it like swelled up and it's really itchy. Not a fan. So I can't imagine being stung by a hornet multiple times. There's Oscar Colas, Miguel Vargas, the Dodgers. I think the close I came to something like that was when I was a wee lad, much younger than 12 or 13. I think I was at maybe at a public park or something like that or maybe it was in the old apartment complex my parents used to live in there was like a some grass 
in the middle of the apartment complex, like a little courtyard type area. And I think I sat in or stood on top of a, uh, a red ant hill. Not like a hill, maybe it was like a mound. I didn't really notice. And I remember standing on top of that and then the ants got in my pants. They were everywhere, not just in my pants. Seven out of 25, Cody Thomas. On my legs, in my pants, got in my shirt. They're, on, they're all over my body. It's Cody Thomas, rookie auto for the A's, Eric M. And I was doing the ants in the pants dance, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was doing that dance. Uh, getting stung, getting, well not stung, bit, really. Right, getting bit. I forgot what was my uh, my. I think I got hosed down. I think that was the tactic. I, I was not allowed in the house. <laughs> I wanted to run inside. That that was not an option. But I think there was like maybe a hose outside, and I was sprayed down until there were no ants. Any other, do I have any other B stories for you? Bzzz. Um. I do have another B story for you. This this was more recently. This is maybe just a few years ago. I was uh, it was the weekend. And I was driving around town. Here's Aaron Saval for Cleveland. That's the '76. Nice stars there, patriotic. It's gonna go to uh, Michael. Had the windows open. It was an, it was a nice summer day. Had the windows open. My arm hanging out the window. Driving down a suburban street in Santa Monica, something like that. And then uh, I was driving kind of up a hill. And you go down another hill, so I didn't see it was on the other side. Got to the top of the hill, crested that hill, started going down. And I started seeing off in the distance what appeared to be a swarm of flies. I was like, hey, there's a swarm of flies. That's kind of weird. I, I, so I thought they were going to dissipate, maybe traveling 25, 30 miles per hour. I mean, dissipate, got closer, and they were like, that's not, those don't look like flies. That's a swarm of bees. So before I could even raise my windows, I drove through a swarm of bees. Multiple bees got into my car. It took everything in my power not to just skirt and like smash into a pole or something like that. I was able to get into the parking lot of a fast food restaurant, jumped out of my car like a crazy person, you know, patting myself down, making sure there weren't any bees on top of me. The bee got in my shirt, actually. The bee flew into my shirt and was, it was in my back. I had to shake that bee out. A bee did not sting me, though. I was lucky. It's traumatic. Spencer Strider to 2023. Good mustache. I couldn't believe that I wasn't stung. I'm here all week, folks. Come for the break, stay for the jokes. We got a relic card of Big Boppy, David Ortiz. Piece of the jersey going to Daniel. I 
kind of do any other animal encounter? Anyone ever get into some sort of insect or animal encounter? Share your story on the YouTube stream. It'll 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 be on the record, right above my head. You can put it on the record. Trace Thompson and Crowning Achievements Commemorative Patch. That's Ryan Howard. I feel like if injuries didn't get Ryan Howard, I feel like there was there was a Hall of Fame trajectory there. Just counting stats wise. Fighting Phil's Daniel. I've had friends who have hiked and have seen mountain lions in the, the hills surrounding Los Angeles. I have not encountered a mountain lion. Nor do I want to. The closest I got, I guess I got to a dangerous animal was when I was running with the bulls in Pamplona, Spain, but I guess that's more intentional. That's not like in the wild. I don't know if that counts. Went to Yellowstone, saw a buffalo there. Buffalo! But that's, I guess that's also more intentional, but they're, they're apparently they're, they're quite dangerous. People approach Buffalo and then, ooh, autograph coming up? Francisco Alvarez autograph? Yes. From the Silver Pack. Silver Pack, Silver Pack. It's big hit time in the city. There you go, Daniel Smith. Who bought the Mets straight up? 40 out of 99 Francisco Alvarez rookie auto. Now, unfortunately, unlike the other cards, and this, this is a sticker auto, but the pattern in the background kind of camouflages that a little bit. But still nice, still nice, still nice. How is Francisco Alvarez doing? Let's take a look at the stats. For the season, he is hitting 220 in about 173 at bats. 12 home runs, 25 RBIs. He's got a decent OPS though, 742. That's pretty solid. You'll take that. Struggling here in a little bit in the last handful of games in the past week, but yeah, doing all right overall. Oh yeah, we're going to look at Rookie of the Year odds. Now's a good time for that. I think it's sportsbettingdime.com that has like a nice little Nice little Rookie of the Year odds tracker. Any updates here? Oh, listen to this. They did an update about a week ago on the 20th of June. Rangers infielder Josh Young has narrowly surpassed Masataka Yoshida as the uh, favorite for AL Rookie of the Year. So Josh Young is now at plus 190, almost two to one. And Yoshida is at plus 265. And about two and a half to one if you want to split it that way. Gunnar Henderson is uh, four to one. Hunter Brown is almost 10 to one. And then, and then it jumps up to 28 to one. That's Estuary Ruiz, who is stealing a boatload of bases. I wonder if he could get to 100. Then it's Bryce Miller, Royce Lewis, Logan Allen. These are your long shots. Tanner Beebe, Taj Bradley, Volpe's 50 to 1, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For the NL, uh, 
Uh, Corbin Carroll is the overwhelming favorite in the NL. He is minus 475. Next closest is Ellie Dela Cruz at plus 700 at 7 to 1. Then it jumps to 35 to 1, Francisco Alvarez. Bobby Miller for the Dodgers, 45 to 1. Matt McClain, 50 to 1. Brett Beatty, Andrew Abbott, Yuri Perez, Kodai Senga, James Altman, Spencer Steer, so on and so forth. Here's J-Rod. All right. So there, there is the latest on... The, those could change, obviously, very quickly, but that's your ALNL Rookie of the Year odds update, if you're into that sort of thing. I don't know how Corbin Carroll's been doing on the secondary market, but would that uh, would that help? A little Rookie of the Year win, or has that price already been baked in to his secondary market value simply because he's uh, he's so heavily favored at this stage of the season? Eloy Jimenez. And J.D. Martinez, the 2023, who's been turning back the clock a little bit for the Dodgers. We'll go to Daniel and the Dodgers. King Felix. Speaking of, there's Corbin Carroll right on cue. Higashioka, and we got Tristan Houses for Daniel and the Red Sox. There's Corbin Carroll. He's pretty good. Take a glance at those numbers, shall we? Corbin Carroll on the season, 290. 927 OPS, 16 home runs, 23 stolen bases. 80 hits on the season already. He's pretty good. Maybe, uh, could there be a 30-30 season in store for him? That'd be pretty impressive. It's Carlos Correa and Miggy. Highlighting his uh, triple crown. For Nicole and the Tigers, and Cat Team Mojo. Florida cuts it down to, well, they're still a ways away. It's 11 3 now. Florida adding a run in the bottom of the seventh. I'm running out of outs, though. Crawford, and we got a Michael Kopech to 4.99 for the White Sox. Brandon, Brandon 
Vlad Guerrero Jr., that's to 299. For Toronto, Daniel. And we've got an Alec Burleson autograph. Rookie auto for Matthew Wood and the St. Louis Cardinals, the Redbirds. Not numbered, but still nice in that 1988 design. Frazier, we got David Hensley to 2023 for Houston. That will be for Aaron. The Astros. Toglia, old border, gold foil, James Altman. There's Freddie Freeman who got his 2,000th hit last night. I think he get does he get to 3,000? This feels like a lot, right? So Freddie Freeman has, oh, you know what, sorry. Baseball reference usually has like 162 game average. So he averages about 180 hits a year. So he's at 2,000 now. It's 1,000 divided by 180. Five, that's about five and a half seasons. So he needs about six seasons of 180 hit ball to get 3,000. He's 33 years old right now. That would be his 39 year old season. Hmm. What do you think, everybody? Does, does Freddie Freeman get 3,000 hits? He's the type of player that could get 3,000 hits, that's for sure. Thirty three years old. John says yes, he will get three thousand. Yeah, if he, if he's able to get, you know, maybe in the next few years, kind of get some get into that hundred nineties range, right, which is amazing, then he can towards the latter part of his career. I mean, he's always going to hit though, right? I could see the power numbers going down. Right? He averages about 28 homers a season. He had 21 last year. I could see the power going down, right? But those hits aren't going away. He's still going to be a hit machine. Record breakers, Adley Rushman, 
True, he could DH in latter years. That kind of saves saves the legs. And I mean that's Hall of Fame credential as you would think for Freddie Freeman. First, I mean first ballot. I mean I think he's gonna be a Hall of Fame. First ballot Hall of Fame credentials for Freddie Freeman. He kind of gets a lifetime two. He's lifetime two ninety nine right now. So let's say he's like lifetime two ninety nine three hundred. He has three hundred and six home runs. I mean, he'll probably get another. I mean, maybe another home, 100 home runs or so. That's 400 plus home runs. Maybe more if he has a hot year or two here and there, but probably should get 400 home runs. 3,000 hits, and it's first ballot. John also thinks Devers and Machado will get 3,000 hits. I can see that. Should we take a quick look at AL MVP or MVP odds in baseball? For the AL, no surprise that uh, Otani is the runaway favorite at minus 425. Then it goes to Aaron Judge at plus at 17 to 1, plus 1700, which will probably keep getting longer as he's out for much for longer. Here's Michael Conforto, for the Giants, to 300. Then it's Wander Franco, plus 3000, along with Corey Seeger. So it looks like. At least according to Vegas. At least according to Vegas. Corbin Carroll. Looks like Otani's going to be AL MVP. What about the, the NL? No, Ronald Cunha Jr. still running away with it. He is minus 140. Next close is Corbin Carroll at plus 650. And we've got a Matt Walner rookie autograph for the Twins. That's for Eddie Harden, Minnesota. Won that team in the filler. Now, I don't think... Right, Corbin Carroll's not a good play because... I don't think he's going to, he's probably going to win the Rookie of the Year. I don't think they're giving the MVP, too. It's unlikely, but if you're taking a long shot, Freddie Freeman, 7-1. to And it jumps to Mookie Betts, 18-1. to Luis Arias is 25-1, to plus 2,500. I wonder if you take that. Is that a value play right there? Put a little coffee money on that or something? That's if you think that... You know, if he hits 400 for the entire season and the Marlins get into the playoffs, you know, and if baseball writers like the narrative of someone hitting 400, perhaps. There's Michael Lorenzen to 2023. Landon, what's up? Do we have an estimated day for the wax party to go? No. That is in your hands. How quickly do you do you and everyone else want to fill up those wax party breaks? At the current pace, we're thinking probably next two or three weeks, sometime in July. But of course, you and the rest can change that narrative. We can do it even sooner if you want to. There's Jock Peterson to 2.99. But if you click the uh, break schedule, Landon, and I'll drop it into the schedule too. And you can you can click the link in our uh, Wax Party page on jazbeescasebreaks.com. It'll take you to the link where we're keeping track of all the invites. 
So then you can, can also see how many we have left. If you want to keep track that way as well. John says, Arias is not going to hit 400. Let's save a Josh Young, too. He's one of the f rookie of the year favorite here in the AL. Top three NL MVP should be Acuna, Carroll, and Tatis, and Acuna will win. Tatis Jr. is plus 3,000. He's 30 to 1. He's same odds as Juan Soto, Pete Alonso. So Vegas is not... He's not really uh, bullish on uh, Tatis Jr. For whatever, whatever that's worth. Top three, they have uh, Acuna, Carroll, and Freeman as your top three currently. I mean, Freddie Freeman's having a great season. He's hitting 317. I think he's leading the leading the what at least the NL in doubles with 27. He's got a triple, 14 home runs, 48 RBIs, 10 stolen bases. We'll get. To, I don't think he's gonna win, but I think he'll get some votes. All right, Daniel's right too. There may be some old school voters, you know, baseball writers of America who don't want to vote for him because of the PED issues. Genio Suarez. Yeah, McSub saying they're, they're not giving an MVP coming off a of steroid suspension, even if he sets a handful of sing single season records. I mean, Acuna, man, he's hitting 328, 16 home runs, 35 stolen bases, and 962 OPS. Are we going to see, can we, see, I mean, he's got to pick up the home run hitting. I mean, he's definitely, he's at 35 stolen bases. He's definitely get, get, getting 40 stolen bases. Does he get 40 home runs? Is he going to, are we going to see a 40-40 season? I don't think we've seen a 40-40 season since maybe Alfonso Soriano. Did he did he hit 40-40? No one's done 50-50. That I know. I think Alfonso Soriano got close. But I don't think he I don't think anyone's gotten fifty fifty. There's Vaughn Grissom for the Braves. Yeah, the odds show that too, mix up. I think uh Otani's the heavy favorite for, for AL MVP. But yeah, I think the NL MVP is going to be pretty tight. Matt Kemp got close to 40-40. I think he ended up with 39 home runs and 40 stolen bases. That was the year that... Um, why am I blanking on the Brewers outfielder? Was later Popper Royds ended up winning the MVP, leading a lot of people in LA here in Los Angeles saying Kent was robbed of the MVP. Pedro Martinez. I'm seeing too many names here. I'm blanking on like names of players. That goes to Daniel and the Red Sox. Someone in the chat will let me know. That's right, Ryan Braun. Or Lion Braun, as Brandon would say. Nice. <laughs> Remember when he threw the, it was like a UPS driver or like a FedEx driver, threw, threw that guy under the bus? I think that guy might have lost his job or was suspended or something like that.
McSubbs also thinking, listen, if an NL pitcher gets on a decent run post All Star game, they could get into the conversation. The closest pitcher, at least according to the odds, for NL MVP is nobody. They're all hitters on this list. But yeah, you're right. So if someone goes off down the stretch, maybe helps uh, helps a team get into the playoffs. All right, final box. Closest would be Kershaw. You know what? We have not looked at um, we have not looked at. Uh, Cy Young odds. Why don't we take a look at that while I rip open this final box? Uh, where's the oh? There's the Cy Young odds tracker. So let's start with the AL first. Um, and final box, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up, thanks everyone for hanging out with me throughout this break. Uh, in the AL, Cy Young odds, according to Vegas, for whatever that's worth. Shane McClanahan at plus 225, that's about two to one. Framber Valdez of Houston, plus 400, 450, about four and a half to one. Garrett Cole, plus 650. Gossman, plus 750. Otani, plus 1100. Castillo, plus 1200. Kind of jumps up from there. Joe Ryan, Nate Evaldi, Sonny Gray, blah, 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 blah. On the NL side of things, looks uh, looks like Zach Gallant is at plus 170. Behind him, old man Kershaw, plus six jumps to plus 600. So from about one and a half to one, or almost two to one, I guess is a little bit closer. So at almost two to one, it jumps to Kershaw six to one. Zach Wheeler plus seven hundred. Spencer Strider plus eight hundred. Logan Webb plus nine hundred. Mitch Keller plus eleven hundred. Marcus Stroman plus fifteen hundred. Then it jumps another tier to Corbin Burns plus twenty five hundred. Jumps again to plus four thousand with Justin Steele. So on and so forth. Hunter Green, Yu Darvish, Blake Snell, Merrill Kelly, Sandy Alcantara. Zach Gallon really having that kind of season? I know he's been pitching well, but watch out for the for the baby snakes. Yeah, through 16 starts, 98 innings, he's got 104 strikeouts, a 2.84 ERA, a 1.08 WHIP. That's really good. And I don't think wins losses really counts as much as it once did, but he's nine and two. So if he hits a, you know, I'm sure hitting a 20 game milestone might be, 20 win milestone might be helpful too. Chad Pinder, what's going on with this college baseball game here? Florida, just too little too late here. LSU is up 14 to four, bottom of the eighth. I guess crazy things can happen in college baseball, but Kershaw has the LA mark in his favor, though, if he gets going. Has both LA teams ever had ever both MVPs in the same year? No, but I remember the year Cody Bellinger won MVP, Mike Trout won MVP. I think Southern California did have both MVPs at that time, but not the same. Or no, you were talking about both LA teams. Yeah, I think it was Bellinger Trout. It's happened once, I think. Might be the only time. Let's cut a Crawford, and we've got Ezekiel Tovar for Colorado. For the Rocks, that's going to be for Victor. I don't know. I'm back and forth on the on the whole LA market thing though because 
because I, I do believe, you know, especially in voting and stuff like that, there is a, you know, there is East Coast bias. Not a lot of East Coast writers are staying up watching West Coast games. I mean, for Kershaw, it might just be, he might just get votes just on reputation alone. Not necessarily how good, or, I mean, he is pitching well, but... John's not a believer in Vegas odds. No, nor am I. The futures odds, especially for these awards, are a little are are tricky. It's just kind of a fun guideline. But yeah, it, not 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 exact though. Here's Nick Allen to 2023 for the A's. Yeah, you got to look at WAR, right? I think especially these days, in the last 10, 15 years or so, I feel like I feel like uh, more writers are are using wins above replacement a little more heavily than they would have back in the day. For example, I think like there's guys like Alan Trammell, I think, from the 80s who had benefited a lot from that advanced statistic. I don't think I think that got him maybe got him into the Hall of Fame as as a player vote or something like that. So it has been pretty helpful. So if you want to look at it that way, I'm looking at Fangraphs, one of my favorite sites. Your leader in war right now, according to Fangraphs, for the NL is Ronald Acuna with a, uh, that's a 300 by the way, with a 3.9 war, 3.9. Chad Cool goes to the Rockies, Victor. For, and for the AL, it's uh, Wander Franco with a 3.5 win above replacement. Usually, what's the number? A war of seven, eight, nine around there usually is is an MVP caliber season by by the time all's said and done. All right, it, the Otani's getting into the category where it's sort of like LeBron James or where like you know. Could you, you could technically argue that LeBron is the most valuable player on any team every year, but you know, you can't get it to him every year. I, Otani may be reaching that sort of territory. It's like, could you just, can't just give it to him every year. I mean, they could, I guess. I guess Barry Bonds does have a ton of MVPs, so I suppose that could happen. Right, yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm getting at, Mick. So, yeah, Otani does kind of, kind of break wins above replacement because they'll never be how, what what replacement level player would compare to Otani. And here's Carson Kelly to 2023. It should, John, but when you have uh, when you have uh, you know subjective writers, base human beings, baseball writers of America, when you have that, it doesn't be. It's not subjective. So sometimes it does end up being a popularity contest. It's Craig Biggio, piece of the lumber. Yeah, it's not even being able to replace him necessarily, mix up saying is that he earns it both Pitching, fielding, hitting, everyone else only gets two of the three, right? Yeah, I mean, he's pretty unique. I think, uh, 
I mean, we're not going to see anything like this. It's like once in a lifetime sort of stuff happening, if that. Uh, you think Otani, Otani doesn't get traded, right? If you're the Angels, I think they're actually playing pretty decently, so I don't know if trade is on the horizon for them. Are they going to be able to re-sign him? I think he's going to hit free agency. What's the Otani contract going to look like? I feel like at some point he's going to have to pick one. That's going to be a conversation with the player while you're talking to him, negotiating a contract. Are you going to be open to picking one or the other? The Halo's probably got some terrible deal waiting. What, what would the terrible deal be for someone as unique as Otani? I suppose terrible would be... There he is. What's, what's terrible? Years, maybe? Give him like a 20-year deal or something like that? Ooh, look at this. Drew Rasmussen, super short print. Nice. It's got the goggles on. Can't get the champagne in the eyes. That's going to go to Michael and the Rays. If they're smart, you'll trade them. Yeah, have the Angels organization, have they been known to be smart? But do you also want to be the guy that trades Otani? <laughs> you want to be the GM that does that? All right, Silver Packs. McSub said, I think Otani's a long way from having to choose. And it likely depends on which side depreciates first. It's going to be a fun off-season story, that's for sure. Ooh, are we going to get an autograph here? It's Luis Castillo. No, not auto, but a numbered silver pack card. 29 out of 99. That's for Seattle. That is for Victor. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Not a bad break at all. Had a lot of fun here. Keep your eye out for more Series 2 on jazbeescasebreaks.com. A lot of baseball on jazbeescasebreaks.com. Get into it. There's the super short print. Here's a quick little recap. Some nice on-card autos. Some nice Major League material. Auto from the Silver Pack. I like even, even the manufactured commemorative relics are pretty cool. There's the uh, Yoshida 2022. I haven't seen these. That's my first look at this. Reverence autograph patch card, which was awesome. I thought that was really cool. Dave McKinnon and Otani. There you go. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking me. Thanks for hanging with me in the chat as well. Good conversation here. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.